Okay. Nice, there we go, a nice little triple. Well, 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 everyone, we're back with another video in Emerald, because it seems you guys really enjoy watching me suffer, and playing in Emerald is always just pain and suffering, there's nothing else going on. So we're playing Ari. I do believe Ari is still pretty strong on this patch, despite the fact that you're probably not seeing her that much at the higher end of the ladder or in competitive play. I think running Lich Bane into Malignants is just always fantastic on her, or running Malignants into Lich Bane. As long as you get those two items, I'm kind of happy, you can kind of go whatever you want afterwards. But Lich Bane feels very, very nice on Ari. So that's what we're going to be running this game. We're probably going to be running Lich Bane into Malignants, because that's going to allow us to shove in the waves a little bit easier. Shut up, you're so loud. Yeah, Lich Bane is going to allow us to deal more damage. You have more dps with lich bane and your rotations can kind of be longer if that makes sense you're not as much of an assassin in the way that you are a more like you like long fights but you still do a lot of damage if that makes sense it's very weird but if you've played the style you absolutely know what i'm talking about plus you're a lot more of a threat in the side lane because you can one shot powers also if you guys do enjoy the content Subscribe and check out the Patreon in the description below. I'm also streaming my journey to Challenger on my main account over at Twitch TV slash Shori. If you want to check that out, please do. I would appreciate it. But let's get into it. Level 1, we can look to shove the wave. We are playing against the sack, so there's not going to be a whole lot of action in this laning phase. We're probably just going to hit the minions as much as possible. Um, we want to try to deny this guy some minions under tower. We need to make sure that he loses health as well. That is quite important. We don't want him to get free, free health or free minions. That would be the worst thing possible. So we need to chunk him out quite a bit during the early stages. Zack obviously notoriously heals a lot. I think he's a very strong mid laner at the moment. If you guys do enjoy that style of champion. He's more of a roam tank-ish style of player. Uh, close to like a, a tank Galio if you would think about it in that way I suppose. Except he's a lot better in fights. I'm gonna take E level 2. I like taking E level 2 against any melee champion just allows you the the option of hitting them with an e which you can usually chunk people out quite heavily if you hit them with an e under the tower and also it just means that if they run at you you can usually deny them a little bit step on this oh yeah scorch of course yeah scorch does make me tank tower shots doesn't it i'm not gonna be able to step on that but i can chunk him out quite heavily anyway mm, yeah i mean he's just gonna keep picking up these uh these blobbies yeah can go ward the top side, make sure I'm not getting ganked. This is where Zack gets scary when he hits level 3. Why is that? Well, it's because if he hits you with a Q, he's automatically going to hit you with an E afterwards. So you have to try to space that Q as much as possible. Could look for a charm on him when he goes for this cannon, and I absolutely think I will. The intention is not necessarily to deny him the cannon, the intention is just to chunk him out. Keeping Zack on low health is obviously fantastic, because... Get up to these, there we go. Oh, that is a crazy play by you. Not gonna use my Q because I do want to kill his passive. So we're gonna find an angle where my Q hits everything there. Oh, it's not enough damage. There we go. Barely, barely, barely. Yeah, it's not like an Anivia where you want to keep him on low health and without killing him. Uh, Zack, you can just kill from full health if you really want to. So we're gonna hit him as much as possible. I need to shove out this wave. Nice, first blood. That's good. Need to shove out this wave and then go for my base. So we're shoving this as quickly as possible. I'm not going to be capable of following any roams if it is necessary. Zack will get a roam off here, which I can't really do anything about. Push out the wave. The wave is going to be stuck as well, but... What can I do about that? And as you can see, we're already dying in Emerald. That's fantastic. The enemy jungler has two kills at four minutes. Fantastic. I feel like the main issue in like Emerald MMRs is always just one player that just runs the game. Like, there's always one player, it feels like he just does not belong there. And I think that there's an issue in matchmaking right now where lower MMR players that are unranked are for some reason getting placed into, like, Emerald Platinum games. It's very strange. And obviously, they're just ruining the game. They could be on the enemy team or they could be on your team. But obviously, it's never fun to just have the game ruined by one person, right? Like, it's just not fun. Even if you win the game, like, are you really having fun playing that? Not really, right? Just gonna shove out the wave. Could run up here to try to follow the Kha'Zix. The Kha'Zix could come mid lane here, so I'm gonna just ward here. Make sure that I see him in case he is. And there we go. Don't wanna get ganked by him. So, Zack also has very strong gank setup, let's be honest about that. So until I have level 6, it is a little bit scary to uh, walk up in the lane. At level 6, Ari is obviously notoriously extremely safe. So, you're kind of fine at that point. Let's see if I can... Really? Are you not just dead, sir? Nice 
I should have just flashed instantly, I guess. I wanted to Q flash, but wow, that guy dealt a lot of damage. I was not isolated, by the way. He just dealt 700 damage to me without me being isolated. Huh. Yeah, that's kind of the issue. If he didn't have two kills there, I would absolutely live. I probably wouldn't even have had to flash, to be honest. Or he just ran away. This guy is no passive. The fact that he's allowed to play this is a bit illegal to me, it feels like. He has level 6 now, though. That's Kazakh's. It's going to be a problem. Uh, ulting was a bit troll, maybe? Really? Ulting was a bit troll. I shouldn't charm like that, either. I get to deny him quite a lot of minions here, but he's probably not basing, because Kazix can be mid lane. So he could set up a gank, yeah. There's nothing I can really do to deny him, either. Even though I would really love to pressure him here, I can't. Oh, now I can. Oh, and he just jumped in. Okay, so he's just dead. What? Yeah. Emerald players, by the way. Emerald, this guy. He just walks up to the wave. Like, he's bluffing that Kha'Zix is there. But he's bluffing while Kha'Zix showed on the bot wave. Like, what are we doing, man? Like, are we for real? I'm just gonna take my base here as well. The only problem with this setup is you don't run Lost Chapter early, which means that you run out of mana quite easily. But once you proc your mana flow band, it usually feels a bit better. There's no way you're invading while I'm in base, right? Like, that would just be stupid. Seems like he wasn't punished for it. Except for the fact that we do lose Dragon now, but that's how it goes. This guy is running Spectre's Culling. I mean, at some point I'm not gonna deal damage to him, which I think is probably around this point. So I'm just gonna shove out the wave and then look to roam instead. This is kind of the point of the lane where Ari, especially when you're running something like a Lich Bane setup, you, you just push out the wave and roam. They're probably on the Dragon, but there's not a whole lot I can really do about that, right? I should also be respectful of the fact that they might run to mid lane through here, but I would spot the Kha'Zix. That ward spots him. That's why I went for it. But we're just gonna shove out and then leave. We're not going to try to kill the sack in lane. It's just not going to happen. Clear the pink ward. Like, we just don't deal enough damage to make it happen anymore after he gets Spectre Skull. You will, you will heal a little bit too much. But that's fine, because your goal shouldn't be to kill the enemy mid laner after level 7. Your goal should just be, whenever you have your ult available, you push out the wave, and then you roam. Could roam to the top side here. Could also roam bot lane, but I think walking with my jungler makes a little bit sense. In the off chance that Kha'Zix is here, which he is. He can't play this, so that's fine. I'm just gonna take the pink ward. Yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to play it. I'll just leave. It's all good. Got his ult. Junked him out. Good enough for me. He got his first strike proc, though. So, he's also smiling. But I win my Hecarim, the enemy topside jungle. Which is obviously fantastic. And then we're just gonna walk back to mid lane and shove out the wave. Need to be a little bit scared here, in case the Zac does land a Q on me. But he can't land an E on me without first landing a Q, because I'm just gonna charm him out of it. That's very important, that you're always paying attention and expecting the Zac to, like, E on top of you, right? I understand that you do want to play that, but I can't. Kha'Zix is on the bot side, so I'm gonna hover the top side. I would really prefer not to play this, because our jungler is top side. Yeah, charm him out of it. Oh, am I just dead? <laughs> I'm just one shot underneath my tower. How fed is this guy? I thought he ulted. How fed is he, man? I didn't get hit by... I got hit by a Zac Q, but I was dead no matter what there. What are we doing? Can we maybe kill her? I can ignite her and call it a day, maybe. Like, what are we doing here, fellas? She doesn't die either, does she? Ah, she lives with 30 health. Unlucky. I mean, my bot lane just... Oh, bot lane! Hey, we're winning on the top side and the mid lane. Hey, what if we just, can, like, don't int the game egregiously? Ah, nah, guys, we have to fucking grief the entire game. Oh, hell yeah. Kha'Zix is on the bot side here. I could try to go for a plate before he runs mid. Go for this plate and then exit to the top side because the Kha'Zix is down here. Go for a ward on the enemy top side as well. Because Kha'Zix should probably shift into the top side here. I have to just be respectful of the fact that he can be sitting in a bush here and trap me. And I don't have my ult available. This is like the biggest point where you know someone is around mid lane and you don't have your ult up. Just don't touch the wave. Like honestly, if you think that there's a risk of you dying very easily and you don't have your ult up. Just don't touch the wave. Just sit back and wait till you have your ult available. When you have their ult available, you can be a little bit more aggressively. Not that it's going to change anything because Kha'Zix is still going to one tap me. 
But, you know. At least it'll make me feel like I played better. I think I'm fine. I don't think this guy kills me. And he'll heal a lot, but that's it. Push out the wave. Kill the blob. Oh wow, he went in. Chaman. Do we? Oh, I mean, I can hold. We have damage, right? Yeah, he's dead. Now my concern would be, is there a flying Kha'Zix coming at me? I have my ult available. Hecarim can get this wave as well, I don't mind that. And now we see the ward ping. Oh, no, 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 please do not play this. Please do not play this. He will one-shot me. Okay, we're getting our, we're getting our Hecarim resources. It's good. That's good. I have my Lich Bane now as well. We're gonna pick up a pink ward next. So we can have some vision around the mid lane. The main issue with going this order of build is you can't go any item second. You have to get your Malignant second. Like, you just straight up have to. In which case, if I went Malignant first, maybe I could spec into an Hourglass second instead of going Lich Bane. But no, when you go Lich Bane first, which is stronger early in my opinion, uh, in terms of actually dealing damage and getting wave push, you're unfortunately not gonna be, be having that that flexibility of your build path. And it's a shutdown for the Kha'Zix, that's not great either, I can't lie. Okay. This guy is playing it in a little bit of a funny way, I'm gonna be honest. But I am just running him down. But I would expect the Kha'Zix to show up here, maybe. I think that is enough damage with the Lich Bane. Yeah, he's dead. Nice, fantastic. Now, this guy probably does murder me, so I'm gonna run this way. And then just try to escape. Mm. I'm just gonna keep running this way. I could blast cone over the wall, but then the issue becomes what if Kha'Zix blast cones or jumps over the wall? I think I can one-shot him here. It's warded? Oh, bro. How is that warded? He must- he doesn't have a ward, so someone else warded it. Because he's walked down as soon as I started to move in, so I shouldn't even ult over in the first place. I just thought it was random. Push out the wave and then take our base. It's okay. Mistakes happen. I don't like the Drake play here, but he's gonna cancel me as well, isn't he? Yeah. I'm gonna have to take my base, I'm completely out of mana. Zack room happening on the top side of the map. Is my Garen just dead? Kaisa is scripting. Oh, I'm against a scripter in Emerald Elo. Oh, that makes sense. My ult available. Zack is still top lane, so. And my Garen is winning the 1v2. Nice. I mean, I can keep pressuring this mid lane tower. Plates just fell off. And now. You start seeing the reason why Lich Bane is so good as well, right? Like, you deal a lot of damage to towers when you have it. And we're winning on the top side of the map. That is fantastic. And I get the first tower here. Nice. That's really good. Can maybe run bot lane here? The problem is I can easily run into a Kha'Zix in one of these bushes. So I'm actually not gonna roam. Specifically against Kha'Zix, I hate going for those sorts of roams where you have to walk through the enemy's jungle. I mean, I could try to follow up on this play. Nice, we get the shutdown as well. That's good, and we got his flash. Zack is probably gonna run mid lane. I could try to hit this tower a little bit. Problem is there's a minion wave blocking the E, so I can't really, you know, charm the Zack very easily. But I'm just gonna shove out the wave. Do I have malignants in base? I do have malignants in base. Probably just take my base after this wave then. Looks pretty good to me. We're 50 CS up mid lane. We're playing 10 CS per minute, but we're still finding timers to move. That's how we know we're playing a good game. That's what you guys should be aiming for. Fit, like 10 CS, 9 to 10 CS per minute, but still try to look for timers to move. Just don't move on timers that cost you too many minions in the mid lane. That is the important part. Play as if you need to play for 10 CS per minute, but still you are willing to look for roams. That is like the, the thing that you have to, to do when you play Ari. Because you're playing the early game quite similarly to a control mage until you start shoving out waves and roaming a lot and start controlling the side lane. So is she scripting? Let's test it. Could catch the Renata here maybe? I just don't have my ult. Is it warded? No, but this is warded. Can maybe catch this guy? Okay, we get her flash. It's not bad, not bad. To be honest. Oh, Zach is split pushing bot, or Jax is split pushing bot side. 
I mean, I would prefer Garen stays on the... No, but please, man. I don't have my ult. I can't fight anyway. Like, my champ without ult is pretty useless, so... I'd prefer to just stay down here and match the Zat or the Jax. Oh, they're forcing on the bot side. It's good for us. Problem is, I don't have my ult. I can pink ward this. I don't actually don't hate the idea that much. Not a great pink ward, but I'm not gonna walk into my jungle regardless. I'm just gonna walk the safe path around like this, because Kha'Zix is 100% trapping here. Could even be trapping here, to be honest. But I almost have my ult coming up. I can't really approach anything here. I can try to open through mid lane here. Yeah, there we see the Kha'Zix, right? Now that I have vision on Kha'Zix, I feel safe to walk through my jungle again. But whenever you don't have vision on the enemy jungler and it's a champion like Kha'Zix, be very aware. Be very, very aware. Run the safe path. Do not overextend out past your waves. Like, even here, for example, I, I have to walk through here. Like, I cannot walk out and touch the wave. Unfortunately. We can try to force a play on the mid lane here, but this could very easily be warded. That's the problem. Yeah. I don't quite have my sweep arb yet. Oh, it is warded. I mean, I'll just jump. It's all good. He should be dead. Nice. He dies. Can maybe look for a play. This guy is no flash, right? Oh, my charm was a bit... That was a bit susy. I'm gonna be honest. Nice. She dies. Do I get my ult? Ah, that's never gonna hit. Let's just walk back to bot lane. Kha'Zix just killed himself. We can walk back to bot lane. There's no reason for us to stick around on the mid lane anymore. We can't really do anything without our ult, right? Plus, bot lane is where we're going to be gathering resources here. That's where we can get a wave. There's no reason for us to be sitting mid lane and do absolutely nothing, right? Like, whenever you don't have your ult on Ari, you kind of want to value your CS quite heavily, right? And we, I can also look to take this bot lane tower. Zack is going to move down here, though. That is the main concern. I'm also a bit worried that Jax might TP behind me. Drake is up in 11, huh? I'm gonna have to not die here. If I die here, it's very bad. I don't quite have my ult up yet. I would very much like to kill this tower. Really? Oh, Kha'Zix is here. I mean, I can flash this way. And then ult, maybe? Oh, there's a Jax here as well. <laughs> oh, I didn't see the Jax. Oh, that sucks. We don't have Hecarim ult yet either. Oh, everyone's dead though. They're all dead. They're all dead. They're all dead. Kaisa goes in? I don't think that's good. I don't think that's good. I think you killed the Kaisa. Nice! Everyone's dead. Zack gets to live, maybe? No, he di dies too. Yeah, everyone's dead there. Nice. The reason for flashing to the left is to get into the wave so Kha'Zix doesn't get isolation damage on me. Um, and then I can ult up away from him. But then there was a, a Jax there. Can look for a trap on the mid lane. There's no reason for us to open top lane or open through bot lane. Because the waves are so far out already. I could help DPS the Drake. But I think instead I'm going to sit right here and try to catch whoever. I mean, I'm going to walk up and try to catch the Kha'Zix. Oh, he failed his jump. Should be dead. Jump out. Should be good. Oh, I stopped moving. Oh, that was a bit scary. I stopped moving for some reason. I can go shove out the bot lane. And then maybe we can pressure the Baron. Shove out the bot lane here. Oh, we died? Oh, damn, that sucks. I think I can shove one more wave. Zack could be hiding out of vision, but I think I push out one more wave here, and then I can look to take my base. No one should realistically be able to get on top of me here, unless Zack is hiding here, but he should be in base realistically, and I see two players on the mid lane as well, so I'm just going to push out the wave and then take my base. And now I can look to open through the mid lane here. I don't need to run bot lane to push out the wave before then opening through mid lane. And you can see Zack is responding to the, to the wave on the bot side, which now gives me a timing where I can make a play on the opposite side of the map. And that is how you create tempo advantages. You go for plays when the enemy has to catch the wave in a location, or you force a play before you have to catch the wave in a location. We can kill this quite easily, by the way. She's moving bot side? Oh, well, that sucks. If she moved uh, just regularly, I think we would kill her there quite easily. But I suppose she must have had vision. Garen is opening through bot lane. So I suppose I can... Oh, I can sneak in here, I think. Assuming it's not warded. Could very easily be. Okay, can we... Mm. I mean, kind of sucks that that hit me. We can shove out mid lane here. Zack is looking to go mid lane and force a play. I can open top lane if need be. We have a Herald, huh? Oh, this is a bit of a dodgy play. Are we Heralding? Oh, we're Heralding. I can't run top lane then, unfortunately. I would like to just run top lane and... 
cover the tier 2. But if we're heralding mid lane, I am very afraid that my teammates are going to grief. Which, I mean, certainly does look that way. We're flanking, so I'm going to look to force a play here. Look for the Renata. Okay. Can go Baron, maybe? I mean, I can base here. Is she going to cancel me? Uh, well, that was just perfect by her. Yeah, I mean, Kaiser cancelled it. What can I do? Hello? How much vision do you have, bro? Excuse me? Like, there's just wards everywhere here? I thought we swept it. I guess we didn't. I don't think she's scripting. She would have dodged my E if she was. She would have altered a bit better as well. That guy went in. Respect. I don't think she's scripting. I thought she just barely didn't have vision on me here, but she clearly did. But do you see what I mean by there's always one person in the game that's just ruining it? In this game, it's the enemy's Zack. Do you think the Zack deserves to be here? Or the Jax? I'm not so sure, man. On my team, it happened as well, right? People were just griefing bot lane for no reason. Like, it just happens in Emerald. Like, all you can do is try to keep a cool head and just keep playing. Try to make the decisions that you think are actually good. Despite the fact that your teammates might be... Well, it might be little Timmy coming home from third grade math, right? Where he's struggling with, with, with just basic calculus and then, you know... I'm gonna open through topside here and we're gonna shove out this top wave. My teammates are likely in base anyway. I could try to go for a trap here. Or I might have to run down and save my teammates actually. Looks like they're all gonna be in a little bit of risk of dying here. Okay. Nice, there we go, a nice little triple. I have two alts left and a flash. Nice. Give me the penta! Don't be weird, man! <gasps> no! Please, man! No, I have to kill him. No! To be fair, if you don't get the penta, then it's not earned, right? Like, if the enemy gives the penta to you, do you really deserve the penta? Nah, you don't. But we just did just turn the entire play. Nice. I have my ult coming up here. I mean, this guy just dies as well, no? Just play it slow, play it slow. Be patient and play it slow. Don't try to go for anything too quickly. Just play it slow and play around our Lich Bane. Play around our cooldowns, very important. I don't have Baron here, so my recall is a little bit slower. How is Crypt Bloom this game? Mm, unnecessary. Can probably just run an Hourglass. Just go Seeker's Arm God, call it a day. Enemy team has quite a lot of AD damage. They also have quite a lot of AP damage, as a matter of fact. This guy's AP, this guy's AP, this guy's like mostly AP, shockingly enough, despite of the the way, like, despite of the fact that people think Jax does a lot, like, mostly physical damage, I think it is mostly magic damage, because his spells are mainly magic damage, and his ult is magic damage, W is magic damage, and, like, every third auto is magic damage as well, right? Oh. I mean, that should be the game. That is the most awkward way for the game to end. The enemy team just doesn't play it. They just walk in, they die, and that's it. That's the end. Owie! Kaisa! Okay, I mean, I'm just gonna charm him. I don't even have to ult. You see how much I heal as well? It's ridiculous, isn't it? Kha'Zix is up now. Gonna sweep here. Oh, that charm. Hey, yo, guys, did you see the charm? It's right out there. It's outside my apartment. It just flew out. Like, just flew past me. Like, like, whoa, the charm is going, guys. I see it. Let's have a look at the damage. I had highest damage in the game by quite a substantial margin. Fantastic. I don't think the Kaisa was scripting, but you can see there's just one player in the game that goes 0-8, and then one player in the game that goes 3-8. and eight. What is the enemy Kha'Zix and the enemy bot lane supposed to do? But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed.